Uh, it's wonderful to be here. I've been working on college campuses for more than 20 years, and 75% of you already know someone who has experienced sexual violence. No one is responsible for the sexual violence that someone else perpetrates on them. Ever, period, no exceptions. Empower them to do that. Someone who has experienced sexual violence has had their choices and their decisions taken away from them. So these are four things that I want you to do if, you, if anyone ever comes to you and says, I've experienced sexual violence or you think that's gonna happen. Uh, make sure they're safe, believe them, it's not your fault, and empower them to make choices. Does that make sense? I would argue, because men are overwhelmingly the perpetrators of all forms of sexual violence, that we need to shift our thinking and start thinking about sexual violence as a men's issue. We want to be proactive and prevent sexual violence from happening to anyone, period. One in four college women report surviving sexual assault or attempted sexual assault. 84% of them did not describe what they had done as illegal. The problem is with how we as a culture have taught him to hook up and have sex his whole entire life. We literally teach people to rape other people. We just don't call it that. Also glad you're here. Could you tell us what the difference is between sex and rape? We're all super confused. That'd be super helpful. No one has ever asked me to do that. <laughs> the reason no one has ever asked me to do that is because we are so well miseducated. Is informed consent at every step of the way, affirmative consent that is freely given. We tell people that Sexual violence is when someone has said no or stop, and that's a terrible definition. The accurate definition is anything other than a green light is not consent. So, In order for consent to be valid, someone has to be able to make another choice. If you're not able to say no, then you're not really giving consent. Valid. The trouble is our culture teaches us if you're interested in someone and they're not interested in you, buy them another drink. We teach that alcohol is how you get consent when the reality is alcohol can make consent impossible. Stop to noticing it. The four key components of the rape culture that I want to talk about is the objectification of women, supporting women's intelligence, capability, and humanity, defining masculinity in poor ways, and intersecting forms of oppression. <laughs> this is how we as a culture define masculinity as sexual conquest. We teach men, all men, there are very narrow and rigid boundaries of how you're allowed to think, feel, and behave and not think, feel, and behave. We can't care about sexism and not care about racism. We can't care about racism and not care about homophobia. We can't care about homophobia and not care about anti-Semitism because they all intersect and they all reinforce each other. We can intervene when sexual violence is imminent and we can intervene at the roots of sexual violence. So in the words of Cornel West, I'm not optimistic, but I am so hopeful because of the difference you're going to make. Thank you very much.